Okay, not a tremendous secret that I'm not a huge fan of Joanne, aka uh, JK Rowling. The funny thing is, it seems most everyone also isn't a fan of her these days. Her reputation is taking a remarkably negative turn in the past few years, in large part because she seems to have burnt through every ounce of good faith she ever had in a desperate effort to advance the anti-trans cause. If you look up JK Rowling, anything, any news story, anything going on with her, it's about trans people, and a lot of it is being covered in a negative light. So, for instance, if you were to Google JK Rowling right now, you would find out that she just released a book, which is over 1,000 pages long, by the way, and that book is about a person being canceled online and doxxed because people online accuse them of being transphobic. We have a, a, a self-biopic here coming out from J.K. Rowling. And by the way, I've looked through a lot of media covering this, mainstream media, you know, NPR, whatever, New York Times, Washington Post. A lot of people seem to be making fun of her for it a little bit. You know, you can, you can see the writers at, the, uh, at their desks, like, cracking a smile as they're like, oh, all right, well, she's at it again. I mean, everything's gone wrong for her, really. Um, her, her credibility... Uh, uh, diminished her uh, charitability, uh, gone her subsequent movie series, you know, uh, far less attention the Harry Potter stuff got. They didn't, you know, they, they, she wasn't, she didn't even go to that, that Harry Potter actors reunion. You know, it's just, it's downhill. That's what I'm saying. But I wanted to talk a little bit about this book because um, it's, it's truly fantastic stuff right here. For anyone who wants a full repeater on how bad J.K. Rowling is, watch um, the Sean video on Harry Potter. Uh, great video. Really, really great video. But, um, yeah, it's, it's remarkable how uh, overwhelmingly she's committed herself to this one position. So anyway, J.K. Rowling's novel The Ink Black Heart reportedly features character canceled online for being transphobic. How relatable. Now, this actually gets funnier. Doesn't take a great pair of detectives like Cormoran Strike and Robin Ellicott, those are the characters in the book, to figure out J.K. Rowling's latest novel may be a case of art imitating life. The Harry Potter creator's latest novel, The Ink Black Heart, the sixth installment in her ongoing crime series, which she pens under the name Robert Galbraith. By the way, Robert Galbraith, the uh, creator of uh, conversion therapy for gay men, uh, in case you were wondering where she got the pen name from. She uh, says she... Why, why, does she, why does she say she chose that name? I mean, this is, it's, it's like choosing, like, Adolf Hitler or, like, Goring or something. Uh, it's, it's not exactly a common name. Ah, oh, yeah, here we go. Why did Rowling call herself Robert uh, Galbraith? Her pen name was picked deliberately. I chose Robert because it is one of my favorite men's name, because Robert F. Kennedy is my hero, and because, mercifully, I hadn't used it for any of the characters in the Potter series or the Casual Vacancy. Yes, my, uh, my pen name is Benito Mussolini. I've always liked the name Ben, and Benito adds that ethnic flair that I've always thought, I've always thought would sound nice alongside the, the Ben, you know? And as for Mussolini, I don't know, I think it sounded nice, smiley face. Yeah, it's, it's Robert Galbraith, really, yeah, it's, it's the, the creator of conversion therapy. Linked up gay men's brains to electricity, you know how it is. Fantastic stuff there. But anyway, it gets funnier. She is the, uh, the absolute master of no plausible deniability, despite her best efforts. In the novel, a popular YouTube content creator named Eddie Ledwell is met with a wave of backlash online after her work is deemed racist, ableist, and transphobic. As a result, the character was, quote, doxxed with photos of her home plastered on the internet, subjected to death and rape threats for having an opinion, and ultimately found stabbed to death in a cemetery. Mm-hmm. Throughout the novel, Rowling takes a clear aim at social justice warriors and suggests that Ledwell was a victim of a masterfully plotted, politically-fueled hate campaign against her. The outlet also notes. If any of that sounds familiar, it's because Rowling herself has been blah, 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 blah. We know how this goes. Still, on the blog The Rowling Library, Rowling maintained any similarities between her own life and the ink black heart are just coincidence. Unbelievable! She spends years melting down on Twitter and is like, uh, she writes a, a 
just like through tears, teeth clenched, writes a thousand page uh, vague post on a person being accused of being transphobic and being harassed, seduced, what have you. Total coincidence. Absolute coincidence. No relationship whatsoever. I have never created a book, and this book certainly isn't created from my own experience, you know, with a view talking about my own life, she wrote. That doesn't mean, of course, that your own life experience in the book. Wink. Oh, yeah. This wasn't this wasn't inspired by my own experiences, but that doesn't mean it hasn't happened to you, fellow warriors for biological femalehood. Wink. I would like to be very clear I haven't written this book as an answer to anything that has happened to me, she continued. Although I have to say, when it did happen to me, those who had already read the book in manuscript form were like, Are you clairvoyant? Ah, oh, it's like she's a witch who goes to Hogwarts. I wasn't clairvoyant, I just... Yeah, it was just one of those weird twists. Sometimes life imitates art more than one would like. So earlier I said that she wrote this through tear-stained eyes with clenched teeth. Okay, content warning, all right? Because this is, uh, if, if you have weak guts that can't withstand being busted, this might be too funny for you, all right? This is not joke, it's not joke, all right? These are transcripts from the book, posted by Nathan J. Robinson, thank you. I realize J.K. Rowling's new novel may seem a bit long at 1,200 pages, but a good portion of the space is taken up by fictitious mean tweets. So here we have I am uh, Evola Julius uh, calling this person a shallow bitch in, in Twitter format. In a book, by the way. In a book you could buy physically at a store, we have uh, Twitter formatted inserts. She knows Evola. I'm sure she's a fan. Uh, into the book itself, which, of course, since they're meant to represent the abuse being delivered to the uh, totally innocent and impugned, maligned, allegedly transphobic character, you know, they're full of abuse and hatred and blah blah Okay, so that's, in my opinion, pretty embarrassing. Like, one of the most famous authors of all time, and it's like, we're literally formatting tweets in the thing. However. It only gets funnier when you realize there are a lot of them. A significant portion of this book is written in tweet format, not mad. Vosh, this is mental illness. This is absolutely mental illness. Not mad. J.K. Rowling is here with a new uh, top seller, and she wants you to know that there is no chance whatsoever that she is mad. Not even a little bit. Nathan J. Robinson followed this up. That's, uh, how many images is that? That's, uh, 4, 5, 6, 10, 14, 18, 22. Great. Uh, by saying, I'm weary of taking screenshots, but rest assured, plenty more pages of this book are taken up almost entirely by tweets. Fantastic. I'd like to believe I'm at least partially responsible for this, you know? I don't know if I am, but I want to believe it. I skipped by this, by the way, but this book... This physical book, printed on physical paper, includes tweet deleted in, in its formatting. The, I, I, don't, I don't even know how to satirize this. She was one of the most famous and beloved authors in human history. A billionaire. Single-handedly changed culture. Rested it and pushed it in a new direction with her young adult fantasy fiction. And this is where we are now. J.K. Rowling's Twitter feed is full of hundred like tweets of her getting brunch with people who are uh, meeting together to say that they don't like trans women. Um, and the only time she gets any kind of signal boosting is from conservatives uh, who retweet her when she complains about being canceled. Uh, or, or harassed by people who are offended by her disdain for human rights. A queen turf, yes, yeah, she literally lives in a castle. It's brilliant, folks. It's truly fantastic. God, I hate rapping pre Wait, sorry. Check your phone, I've texted you. This new Homestuck arc looks like shit. Ha! Oh, dude, you're right. This would be in Homestuck. The bad parts of Homestuck. This would be in, like, in part two or something. Holy shit. God, I hate wrapping presents.
9.32 p.m. 23rd of December 2014. Me too, it's shit. Take shit to no shit. Go have another wank, incel. She's too old for you, Pato. Blocked, arsehole. That's the whole page. This was printed on a dead tree. A tree died for this. Several trees. Who would want to read this? I don't know. I don't know who J.K. Rowling's audience is anymore. Because as far as I can tell, everyone younger than 25 just hates her. I don't think I've seen anyone publicly defend J.K. Rowling uh, who's in, like, the uh, Gen Z. I don't think I've seen that at all. You know, I'm sure it was, like, five. But, and for the older people, uh, the liberals are out, right? The, the predominant, like, fan base of Harry Potter, which has always had a very wide appeal, you know, has always had a slightly more liberal bent, in large part because the books aren't aren't evidently aggressively reactionary in the way liberals tend to notice. And additionally, uh, because, you know, the witchcraft of the books, you know, they, you'd have, like, a far-right Christian moms freak out about the, uh, the satanic Harry Potter books or whatever. So there was more of a liberal bent to the general audience and community. Plus, you have all those Tumblr kids and, like, uh, uh, archive of our own, you know, types. Uh, Harry Potter's fan base was at least nudged left, and now that's gone. Now, like, the actors from the Harry Potter s series don't like her. The people don't want to work with her. People don't want to work with her anymore. The people who loved Harry Potter either don't anymore or do so in spite of her. The people who support J.K. Rowling now, if you go on Twitter, you go on social media, who actually likes J.K. Rowling, they're not people who read her books or watch her movies. They're people who like the fact that she's transphobic. That's it. They're just conservatives. Seriously, that's it. That's who you'll find out there repping with J.K. Rowling. The audience has dried up. It's gone. It's done. Go to any subreddit, any forum thread, any discussion, any tweet, anything where people are talking about their support of Harry Potter or the um, Magical Beast series. Not of J.K. Rowling, but the, like they like the media itself. Half of the messages in that chain are going to be people doing this to J.K. Rowling. Yee. Like, that's it. Literally, you can go find it. Hey, I really like the movie. It's just, uh, you know, this was J.K. Rowling. There is, uh, you know, like, that's it. That's what you'll find. The Potter subreddit literally banned mentioning Rowling. Incredible stuff. Truly incredible. And you know, I've said this before and I'll say it again. Uh, transphobia really does melt your brain. Once a person becomes committed to transphobia as a political position, it takes over their life, you know? We know uh, 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 Lindsey Graham uh, lost his, his family, divorced from his wife, lost his work, lost his reputation. So, you know, so he could, like, hate on trans people? Like, lost everything. He was respectable before him. Wife? Yeah, he got a divorce, didn't he? Oh, do I mean, do I mean Graham Lineham? Oh, wait, Lindsey Graham. Who's Lindsey Graham? Mixing people up right now. Sam Harris. That's right. Yeah. Grinzy Lineham. There we go. The senator. The senator. Don't they, aren't they, aren't they a little similar though? Don't they, but they both got that doughboy, that, that doughboy goofy face, don't they? A little bit, a little bit. I'm talking about Lineham. I'm talking about here, this, this guy. And Chappelle too. Yeah, Chappelle as well. Uh, this guy. Man, I just, I can't believe how British people look. Imagine being British, J.K. Rowling. Imagine being British and making any jokes about trans women. I swear to God. Wild stuff. Wild physiology. Incredible. Anyway, I, my favorite moment of his career, apart from him getting divorced and losing his family and everything, was definitely that screenshot of him posting in Mumsnet, which is like a conservative, transphobic uh, woman's forum where he's talking about how totally one of the good ones he is and how he really is standing with women against trans women. And the other women there are like, get the f*** out of here, you loser man. <laughs> Fantastic stuff. Quidditch changed its name. Oh, that's right! Quidditch. The sport Quidditch that people play, I guess, 
changed its name to Quad Ball to distance itself from J.K. Rowling. Do you know how much of a super fan you have to be to play this shit? This is like, this isn't just your core audience. This is your hyper ne neutron star mega core event horizon singularity audience. This is, this is like the, 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 uh, the prion soup. What is it called? When, when, at the center of the singularity, what do they call it? When everything melts together, all the matter. What do they call it? They call it like some kind of spaghetti, like lasagna, don't they? It's like matter, matter lasagna, don't they? Something like that. Sp spaghetti, nuclear spaghetti, a gabagool. That's what they call it, a gabagooly. Yeah, whatever. That's what these people are, the Harry Potter. And they're changing their name to distance themselves from J.K. Rowling. Fantastic stuff. Also, no, it's not sp spaghettification. Sp spaghettification is what happens when the gravity differential between the parts of you that are closer to the singularity of the black hole are significant enough from the differences between that and the farthest part that you get pulled apart. We're not talking about spaghettification. That's when you cross the event horizon. We're talking about the f***ing pasta! We're talking about the pasta here! Pasta in black hole. No, it's called uh, lasagna. Lasagna. Cosmic lasagna. There we go. Nuclear pasta found in neutron stars is 10 billion times stronger than steel. That's who these people were. That's who these people were. To Harry Potter. Like I said, there's only so much you can really do to satirize this because this is already kind of... J.K. Rowling's behavior is self-satirizing. Um, what has she been tweeting about lately? Complaining that people are calling her a bigot, saying a tweet is fake, celebrating the book coming out with some balloons behind it. This person likes the book. A lot of book stuff. That's to be expected. Actually, a fairly uh, tame presence on the timeline. Oh, wait. Twitter support. Any chance of some support? <laughs> what? <laughs> the name of this man is Hadim Attar. He is a revolutionary Shia fighter, followed the fatwa of late Ayatollah Rula Khomeini. You're next. <laughs> Two responses, one quote tweet. Here's his photo. 100,000 likes. To all su sending supportive messages, thank you. Thank you for supporting me as I defend myself against this fatwa from Mir Asif Aziz, acting on behalf of of the late Ayatollah Rola Khomeini. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> uh, God. Alright, stop it. Cut the segment.